What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're going to be moving on to the next battle rifle in this series. This is the TAC-V. And the TAC-V is quite a unique battle rifle. First off, it's the only battle rifle that starts off in full auto as default. But let's get into our damage profiles, and we're going to start it off with our semi-auto damage profiles here. Essentially with this gun, in semi-auto, it's going to be a 2 to 4 shot kill depending on the range and body multipliers you hit. Although more often than not, in the ranges you'll tend to find in the multiplayer maps, it's going to be a 2 shot kill. However, it is worth noting that unlike some of the other battle rifles, the TAC-V does not have a 1 shot kill potential to the head, even in semi-auto mode. As for our rate of fire cap in semi-auto mode, this is 476 rounds per minute, and this gives us a time to kill potential with a two-shot kill of 126 milliseconds, which is ridiculously fast, and even with a three-shot kill, 252 milliseconds to kill is fairly reasonable, and at long ranges, it's actually still a very good time to kill. So that's what the TAC-V looks like in semi-auto mode, but now let's move on to full auto, which, like I said, is the default for this gun. And with this, it's now going to be a 3 to 4 shot kill. There's no more 2 shot kill potential to the body, although with headshots, of course, you can get a 2 shot kill. In fact, headshots are incredibly useful at any range while using this gun in full auto. It's always going to be reducing the number of shots to kill mixed in with body shots. And it's also worth noting, this is a very forgiving gun when it comes to body multipliers. It doesn't really matter if you shoot them in the toe or the upper torso at most ranges, it's going to take you the same number of shots to kill. The only exception to this is in the third damage range, at least one of your bullets needs to hit the upper torso if you want to maintain a three shot kill. As for our full auto rate of fire, this is 577 rounds per minute, which isn't super fast, but it's faster than semi-auto at least. And what this means is our time to kill potential with a three shot kill is 208 milliseconds. That's a very competitive time to kill up close. It is worth noting though, you would be beat out by many SMGs in close quarter situations, as you probably should. However, if we just land one single headshot mixed in with body shots up close, we're now getting a two shot kill for a time to kill potential of 104 milliseconds, which basically nothing can really reliably compete against aside from shotguns. So this gun actually has a ton of power potential the moment you mix a headshot in. After that though, let's have a look at our damage ranges and compare full auto to semi-auto. And as we can see here, we have the exact same damage drop-offs. It's just gonna take one extra shot to kill at any range in full auto mode compared to semi-auto. But a great thing to note here is our three shot kill potential in full auto or two shot kill potential in semi-auto is quite solid at about 45 meters. That's very impressive. This gun maintains a great power potential out to a very solid range. Next up, let's move into our idle sway and everything seems to be fairly standard here, but that is to say that there is a decent amount of sway while aiming down sight and that can definitely throw off your aim. After that, let's have a look at our recoil, and we'll first have a look at the full auto recoil, which is basically straight up. And next, we'll have a look at our semi-auto recoil, which does include some horizontal recoil there, unlike full auto. Overall, it's kind of crazy to see that this gun is technically more accurate in full auto compared to semi-auto. That's usually the opposite of what you would normally expect. And also, it's worth noting, when you're looking at attachments on this gun, if you're using it in full auto, you don't need to bother with attachments that help with recoil stabilization, or horizontal recoil. All you need to worry about is vertical recoil, and even that doesn't really require any attachments. It's already in a good place by default. But then let's move on to the stats that apply regardless of which fire mode this gun is in, and we're gonna start this off with hip fire. And the TAC-V has very standard hip fire for the battle rifle category. It's actually not too bad at all at hip firing up close. It's a similar story with our bullet velocity. This is very standard for a battle rifle and great at 660 meters per second. And now let's move into our handling stats. Our aim down sight speed is reasonable, we'll say, at 290 meters per second. It's not the worst in the battle rifle category, but it's also a little below average. Whereas our sprint to fire time is fairly standard for battle rifles at 210 milliseconds. The average there is only skewed by the one outlier, which was the SO14. As for our reload add time, this is actually very good. At 1.35 seconds, this is significantly above average and definitely an upside to using this gun. And then let's get into our mobility stats. And when it comes to this, our base movement speed is just a little bit above average for battle rifles. Our sprint movement speed is actually quite impressive at 6.08 meters per second. This is actually faster than many of the assault rifles in the game. And finally, for our aim walking movement speed, while this is above average for battle rifles, it's still really slow in general. So strafing and gunfights isn't gonna be particularly effective with this gun. But I mean, at least it's above average in this category. And that right there covers it for the base stats of this gun, but now let's move on to some of the attachments, and we're gonna start this off with barrels and their ranges. 
And with Attack V, we only have two barrels. The first one, that 12-inch Lance barrel, this one reduces our ranges by 15%, whereas the 18-inch Precision 6 barrel will increase our ranges by 24%. That's a very nice boost to our ranges there. Then when it comes to how these barrels impact our recoil, as we can see here, both of the barrels add a little bit of horizontal recoil, and I don't really like that a whole lot. Personally, I'd much rather just have the base recoil plot here, and as a result, I actually tend to stay away from the barrels on this gun. But finally, for our important barrel stats, let's have a look at how they impact our aim down sight speeds. And you can see that 12 inch barrel will slightly improve our aim down sight speed, whereas the 18 inch barrel will very noticeably harm our aim down sight speed at 355 milliseconds. After that, I also want to have a look at the aim down sight speeds with the different magazine attachments. And we have two available the 30 round or the 50 round drum. And both of these will harm our aim down sight speed. And of course, that 50 round drum adds quite a bit to our aim down sight time. But having said that, if you wanted to use this as an LMG, that's still a reasonable aim down sight speed for an LMG-like build. So you may even want to consider using that, just be aware that it does harm your aim down sight speed quite a bit. And with that, it's finally time to move into a couple excellent attachment combinations with this gun. And the first one I've got for you guys, I really like this one for playing aggressively with the TAC V. So with this, I kept it fairly basic and bare bones. We got the OLEV laser, the Tempest GH-50 muzzle, which helps with the vertical recoil control, armor piercing rounds, just so we can punch through cover a little bit more effectively, the TV X-Line Pro stock, as well as the demo clean shot grip. With all this combined, we get a pretty solid aim down sight speed at 275 milliseconds. Our sprint out time is also very noticeably improved here at 167 milliseconds. And when we have a look at the recoil, it's overall noticeably better than the base recoil, especially that gap between the first and second shot fired, which can often throw you off target with this gun. We really keep that nicely controlled with this particular build. So even though I say this is more of an aggressive build, you can still use it very effectively at mid to longer ranges just fine. Also, I should mention, you can honestly use this in semi-auto, full auto, doesn't really matter. Either way, you should be able to find success with this, although my preference with Attack V is full auto. As for the second build that I've got for you guys, this is my more all-around to somewhat longer range build, where we do have a very noticeably slower aim down sight speed at 350 milliseconds, but with this we also have an optic on there, which is nice for the longer ranges. We've got the 30 round mag just to improve overall versatility with this gun. We once again do have that OLEV laser and the Tempest GH-50 muzzle. And finally, we have the FSS combat grip to help a little more with the recoil control on top of the already solid recoil of this gun. And when we have a look at that recoil pattern, as we can see here, there is a little bit more horizontal movement. That's mainly because we're compressing the magnitude of it. So any minor horizontal recoil is amplified as a result of this. But overall, this is definitely more accurate than the base recoil. We can put 30 rounds into a smaller group than we put 20 rounds, which is great. And again, you can use this one in semi-auto, full auto. It's really up to you. But for me, I prefer the TAC V in full auto, largely because there's no one-shot headshot potential with semi-auto. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's gun guide on the TAC V. As for my thoughts on this gun, I love it. I really do enjoy this. I think it's a little on the underrated side. Again, I don't really see this gun used a ton by people, but in my opinion, it's one of the better battle rifles in the game, and I love using it in full auto or semi-auto. Either way is a great option with this. If you are using it in full auto, just try to mix a headshot in to get a ridiculously fast time to kill. But even if you don't, you get a very solid time to kill. Very accurate gun with reasonable handling. Now, of course, those are just my thoughts on the TAC-V, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about this gun in the comments of the video. And if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes, there will, of course, be a link to the playlist in the description down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.